Alright demons and demonesses, this is going to be another re-upload. Apparently what had happened was when I first uploaded this uh, video, um, YouTube had decided to take it down for some unknown reason. Uh, apparently they claimed it was cyberbullying. So I did a little bit of um, editing and uh, places here and there. Uh, tried not to use as much profanity as I normally use. Hopefully the video will stay up. Um, like I said, I don't know what the hell is going on. Apparently, YouTube must have me under their magnifying glass. So, I have to kind of watch what I say now, unfortunately. So, alright, well anyway, here goes with the video. Famcast Media. Bitch. Good morning, demons and demonesses. Well, today is that special day, or I should say the most holy and sacred holiday for Satanists. Yep, as you can tell by the two balloons behind me and my daughter's rather excitement, it's my birthday. Yep, I'm officially 27 years old, so <sighs> on my way up to 666, well, but close to 30, so... Yeah, I'm becoming an old man. Well, anyway, um, what I forgot to mention is that, well, another host um, from Famcast Media, the host of the Psychohead Blowout, his name is Scribble, he surprised me and gave me a gift this year for my birthday. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, whatever could this be? Well, he released his new album, the album called The Black Eyed Children. Now, if you guys that know anything about me, um, I did, you know, kind of delve into hip hop a little bit. In fact, it's like one of the music, it's like one genre of music that I grew up with when I was a kid. Growing up listening, uh, when I was still alive, you know, Tupac and Biggie were also, you know, still making music. And I think they died when I was like, what, three, three or four. So yeah, their music was still being played on the radio. Grew up in like the, like I said, the tailbone end of the 90s, the early 2000s, and I didn't really stop listening until after I got out of high school, or I should say like maybe my freshman year of college was like the last time that, you know, I followed mainstream hip hop. Other than that, I've mostly been dealing with ground, um, underground hip hop, independent artists, you know, indie, you know, hip hop. Now this isn't the first Scribble album that I've listened to. Um, the first I've heard was Skinwalker, which I think was one of his earlier albums. And, you know, in honor of my 27th birthday, it's going to be a special episode of Satanic Panic. I will be reviewing both Skinwalker and Black Eye. So, demons and demonesses, make sure you turn on your listening ears, because I'm about to introduce you the host of the Psychohead Blowout and famous rapper, Scribble. <laughs> I was first introduced to Scribble from a friend of mine named D. Ron from From the Dungeon Podcast. Um, like I said, he was the one that got me involved with Famcast Media. And also, if you guys haven't well, figured it out yet, Scribble was the one that actually um, designed the theme song for Fam Famcast Media. You might have heard it at the beginning of the video. And if not, I'll play it again. Famcast Media. Bitch. Now, just a couple of months ago, he invited me on his show where we talked about our top 10 favorite immortal songs. Now, although, you know, he's, you know, an underground independent rapper, he's also, you know, a hardcore metalhead as well. So much respect to him for that, you know. Now, since 2016, he's released four albums, uh, Skinwalker, Quarantine Sessions, Drug Spun Funk, and the most recent album, 
Black Eyed Children. Once again, I can't thank you enough for the gift. Now, as you can tell, you know, Scribble is quite impressive, you know, being active since 2016, and you have four albums being released. So that's averaging about one album a year, which is actually pretty good for an artist. Shows that they have a lot of content and, you know, also good quality and good quantity as well. Now, earlier in the month, uh, D. Rotten had sent me, you know, a teaser for uh, Scribble's album. Um, it was a music video for Trying to Find My Way. Now, this song has got to be possibly one of my favorite songs off of the album. In fact, this entire album is actually really good. Um, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the early, I guess you could say late, two, late 90s, early 2000s um, era of hip-hop. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, is different between Scribble compared to most hip-hop artists. You know, it kind of has that, you know, Tony... You ever play the to if you ever played the Tony Hawk video games... I mean, if you ever played the Tony Hawk games, Scribble's music would fit right along with it. Um, now, the first thing I want to talk about on Black Eyed Children is, well pretty much the obvious now the key to making a really good hip-hop album and you know this might be debatable for some people for, but for me it's always the instrumental um it basically if you have a, a pretty terrible instrumental then terrible instrumental you're probably going to have a terrible song despite how good the lyrics might be although it could be hit or miss depending on you know what type of a hip-hop head you are now, compared to most modern rappers, Scribble uses, you know, that type of, you know, early 90s slash 2000s type mixing technique, or his producers have. I'm not exactly sure who produced uh, most of the beats on this album, but whoever did, you know, basically paid great homage, you know, to producers of that era. Um, it's not really a lot of, you know, hardcore techno type beats that you hear, you know, on the radio today. And also Scribble's flow and style, he doesn't quite trip over his words. In fact, you know, it kind of has like a very good rhyme scheme to it. And the most important thing out of all of this, Scribble doesn't use autotune. You know, we, we see that so many times in hip-hop nowadays, where a rapper will literally rap over autotune throughout the entire song, and it just sounds like complete and utter rubbish. Or they'll rap about things that literally don't make any sense. Now to start off, uh, Black Eyed Children is 14 tracks long. And to be honest with you, I kind of listened to the album pretty quickly. Um, I first listened to it, um, like I said, the, the day he had sent it to me. And also, um, I'd, well, taken some edibles and listened to it with some edibles. So, like I said, it's, it's a really good album to experience. It starts off with the first song called The Retribution, which kind of has, you know, a cinematic intro to it. And then it goes into, you know, I guess you could say um, a horror-themed, you know, rap beat. Now, the second track on the album, Born All Over, um, that has to be, like, one of my favorite tracks off of this album. And, believe, and to be honest with you, this album has a lot of, you know, gems on it. Um, this kind of has that really, really old-school type sound to it. You know, it, like, you don't really hear that that much in hip-hop nowadays. Um, you have, like, the record, vinyl scratching, then you have, like, the sampling. Um, like I said, it's, 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 a, it's a really, really old technique that's used in a lot of, you know, classic hip-hop. Um, and basically, Scribble just used that, and, you know, it, it, and use that in, in a modern age, which is, like I said, something you don't really often see. And he, he, and he basically pulled this one off pretty well. So, I, like, I look, like, I literally thought that I was listening to, you know, an unheard demo tape or something that, you know, you would hear on vinyl. Now, the other track that I want to speak to you guys about, well, this is the one that actually had the music video to it, which was Find My Way. Now, I really like the sampling that was done on this song. Also, the person who did, you know, the videography, you know, for, you know, the music video, uh, they did a pretty good job at it. And to be honest, I really hope to see more music videos from Scribble after seeing this. Anymore, I've been racing against the force, my soul so shallow. Hate me 
me at the gallows It's like me to the shadows, my face so shallow Heart so hollow, force into this world Then I can't face tomorrow, can't face the sorrow Never shelter to the narrow Trudging through the mud, dirty mug with a rough flow I thought I knew it all though Thought that I was strong, but my mind don't stop racing Until everything is calm, nothing's ever calm I've been racing all along Wasting every minute of my hatred in these songs With this anger, I am strong I am God, destroy the world around me I am nothing, I am all motherfucker I'm trying to find my, try to find my way But I'm terrified Fact, I enjoyed this song so much, I like practically ran it back like three or four times when I was listening to it at work. So, so far we went across two tracks on this album and both of them are gems. So, let's move on to the next one which is Bring the Pain. Now, now this is another song that, you know, has that old school type feel to it. Um, has, first it starts off with, you know, a sample. Then you hear, you know, a little bit more record scratching. And also, like, I'm guessing, I, I, I don't know if it was the drums or something like that, but it sounds like MPC-type drums that they used. Plus, on top of that, you have, you know, the jazzy piano sample that they used. And that also leads to another transition, which it goes to the next song called Vampire Tactics. And this is another song that I like because this was actually very um, creative, um, especially for, you know, for Scribble. Um, basically, what it's, it, it, basically what it is, it... So basically, it's a horror track, but what Scribble does is not not only does he rap, but um, he has someone else that does the hook, but the hook is more sang more, I guess you can say, with harsh vocals. I, I guess you, I guess it's like, I guess to put it bluntly, it's kind of like you know metal vocals on a rap track, which I have, to, which I have to say is pretty unique because you know the past few other rappers that um, I've spoke about trying to use this, um, so far they haven't been able to succeed. But, you know, this is actually a memorable hook. It's pretty catchy. Um, this is another song that I, you know, had to go back and listen to over and over again. I mean, I won't sell my soul because I'll give it to you for free. Now, I'm not sure if Scribble wrote this himself or if he collaborated on someone with this, but whoever this other person is that's doing the hook, Scrib definitely needs to work with him again. And I expect to hear more content like this in the future. And, well, thankfully, you, um, you, you hear a lot more of this on this album. Now, another song that I want to speak about is Dreams in the Witch's House, mostly because I love the lyrical content with that. Um, don't want to give away too much, but um, basically it's Scribble and another artist he featured called, um, I think, Red Cloud or something like that. And um, let's just say it's extremely critical of organized religion. Now, if you know anything about me, like I said, you know, I'm an atheistic Satanist. Um, one of the things I'm like heavily critical on is religion and you know this is like basically this is the same thing that I tell religious people all the time like maybe I should just show them this song because you know like I said Scribble and Red Cloud this is a masterpiece right you know Dreams in the Witch's House is one of those hardcore I guess you can say heavy hitter songs off of this album um, it's pretty aggressive um, like I said the, the instrumental use is pretty aggressive the lyrical theme is pretty aggressive so this song, this is one of those songs that'll get you pumped up. Uh, to be quite honest, out of all the songs in this album, this is the song that I've probably listened to the most, along with "Find My Way." But we're not even halfway there yet. Now the next song that I've been listening to a lot is "Better Than Ever." Um, this is a song. Now this song um, starts off kind of mellow. You know, you have like the little synths, then you have uh, the roads, and it kind of gives off, I guess you can say, a more chilled slash relaxing type of hip hop beat. Um, he also features another artist on this track. Um, no, I'm, I'm a little bit blanking on the name, um, but this is one of the songs that I personally felt was, I guess you can say, a little bit too short. Um, or, may or maybe it was the fact that I was enjoying it too much and I just wanted to keep repeating it and listening to it. Like some of Scribble's previous work, uh, this song also has a pretty memorable chorus. And that, in, in combination with the instrumental, um, like I said, this is another high replay song that I would, you know, recommend everyone listen to. Now there's two more tracks I want to talk about on this album. Uh, one of them is Beyond the Black Rainbow. Now, this is a song that, you know, is kind of, you know, heavy hitting. Um, basically it's about, you know, going through a struggle or a tough time in your life and trying to, I guess you can say, overcome it. Now this instrumental, um, now the instrumental he picked off of this was, you know, another one of those, um, um early 2000s type, uh, instrumentals. It has the roads, has the heavy bass, and it has, you know, the snare kick, um, you know, it's kind of one of those tracks that you... 
You know, it's kind of one of those tracks that you... You know, it's kind of one of those tracks that you can probably picture in, in like a Tony Hawk game or something like that. And um, I know this might sound weird, but this is actually one of the songs that I listened to, like, when I took some of those edibles. And, like, you can literally see the visuals of, of everything that he's talking about in this. And speaking of that, that kind of leads to the last song I want to speak about on this album, which is, which is called Past the Green, ironically. Now, like I said, this is a song I was listening to also because... You know, just a couple months ago, New Jersey legalized, you know, recreational marijuana. So, b believe me, this is like one of the songs that I'm going to put on my Stoner's playlist. In fact, I might put the whole freaking album on my Stoner's playlist the next time I do take an edible. And plus, Past the Green is kind of, I guess you could say, Scribble's, I guess, Stoner Anthem. I mean, if you listen to the lyrics, the lyrics are just absolutely hilarious. Like, like I said, I, I don't want to you know, expose too much about the lyrics because like I, I said, I want you guys to actually listen to this song, <laughs> listen to this album yourself because this it, it, it gets pretty heavy hitting and then it gets kind of funny sometimes too so, I mean, based on the way this song was written, Scribble would seem like a pretty fun guy to get high with. In fact, you know I, I, I'm, I mean, I know this might be an exaggeration but I, I truly mean this like, I usually have, like, a specific number of songs that I will listen to on 420 if I happen to be off from work. Um, this song is definitely going to have to be on that playlist. Um, probably moving up to the top. Now, that's pretty much Black Eye Children. Like I said, I didn't really go through all of the tracks. Uh, mostly the ones I, I've played the most and I've listened to the most. But, you know, I couldn't get enough just about off of this one album. And, you know, I have to do something special for my birthday. So I'll be talking about another one of his albums that I've been listening to a lot, which is called Skinwalker. Ah, yes, Skinwalker. Now, this is one of Scribble's earlier albums. In fact, um, it was one of my the first uh, Scribble album that I've listened to. Now, this album was released, um, I think, I think I was, when this album came out, I was literally just starting Satanic Panic as a podcast. You know, D had just, you know, sent me the link to, you know, the Psycho Head Blowout. And, you know, I started checking out strict scribble stuff from there. Um, but either way, this was a pretty heavy hitting album. Now, unlike, you know, the Black Eyed Children, I'm going to, you know, just talk about a few specific tracks off of this album. Um, once again, because like this album had some really good stuff on it. Um, this I'm going to be a little bit out of order, too, because the first song that I want to talk about is the song Fatal. Now, Fatal, it starts off, you know, kind of like like a really old Game Boy type game. But, you know, it has like this really, really kick-ass bass line to it. Now, I have to say, out of all the songs on Skinwalker, this is probably one of the most hardest and darkest um, when it comes to, you know, the instrumental. Uh, the second song I'm going to talk about is the song Bruce Campbell. Now, this one kind of has that west coast sound to it um i guess you can say um when it comes to drums it kind of has that g-funk drum vibe to it which you know fits in well because you know scribble is from you know california so now i think he had another rapper on this track with him as well and uh like i said this this song is actually pretty gruesome so like if you're into you know gore and whatnot um this is uh this is the song for you <laughs> Now, the third song on this album is the song All Hail. Um, this is actually starts off pre pretty earlier in the album. Um, it starts off with, you know, a narration. I'm guessing, is that Vin I'm not sure if that's Vincent Price or if it's someone else. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's basically sounds like you're about to watch a horror movie. And I guess it must be the inner nerd in me, but I guess um, this song gave me like some epic Castlevania vibes. And I think it's mostly because, you know, so, some of the puns he used in the lyrics um, coincide to events that happen in the video game Castlevania. Like in the second verse, he makes um, a vampire reference. Oh, I'm not sure if he did this on purpose. I don't know if um, Scribble is also a major Castlevania fan. But this song is automatically going into one of my favorites when it comes to Scribble's albums. So to conclude, um, this is an album that I pretty much enjoyed listening to, both Skinwalker and Black Eyed Children. Um, from what I heard from Scribble, apparently Black Eyed Children is so popular that, well, 
Unfortunately, the pirates have gotten their hands. But you guys definitely don't want to be like the pirates. So right here on the bottom, I'm going to post the link so you guys can check out his album. Um, also, another thing, I will say this. You know, listening to this album makes me want to listen to more artists within this genre. You know, I've kind of, you know, been, I guess you can say, neglecting, you know, hip-hop and rap um, ever since, you know, well, I've gotten older. Because, um, you know, the, the rap that I grew up listening to pretty much is almost extinct. That type of uh, music is only mostly played by either indie artists or underground artists. And, you know, like I said, I've, be I've just been chucking everything on, just painting everything with one broad brush. And I'm like, you know what, that's really not the right thing for me to do. And, you know, like I said, Scribble kind of, you know, piqued my interest in it. So I will be checking out other artists within the genre. As for Black Eyed Children, um, it has a pretty high replay value. You know, whether you're listening to it to chill, whether you're listening to it while you're working out, whether you're listening to it while, you know, you're getting high, um, this is a pretty enjoyable album. And plus, it goes along well with Skinwalker as well. So, after, you know, releasing two great masterpieces like this, um, I honestly do believe that Scribble has a lot going for him right at this point. Um, he might release some more music videos. Um, um, with the rate of, you know, album and EP releases, um, I'm guaran we're guaranteed to get at least get one album or, or something in 2021 or 2022. So, like I said, Scribble's always remaining busy. He's always writing, always creating, you know, great masterpieces like this. So, without all my rambling, I give Scribble... I'm, I'm going to try and, you know, remain as unbiased as possible. Scribble is going to get the Satanic Panic Show rating of a 9.3 out of 10. You know, it takes a lot to, you know, write an album. And the fact that, you know, he's always consistent, always releasing, you know, a steady flow of content, you know, plus that, that and his podcast, you know, Scribble has, you know, a very big schedule. And, you know, he's able to accomplish all of this, all of these great things in such a short period of time. And all I can say is, Scribble... I will watch your career with great interest. But that's pretty much all I have to say. If you like Scribble's album, check it out. Um, check out both Skinwalker and the Black Eyed Children. And also, if you guys haven't seen it yet, um, watch the Psycho Head Blowout or listen to the Psycho Head Blowout. Uh, some of them are recorded. Some of them are, you know, just audio only. And you'll also check out the rest of, you know, the FamCast Media Podcast. Well, that's pretty much all I have to say. Still have to cut my birthday cake and whatnot. But all right, uh, Scribble, I want to thank you so much for the birthday gift. Um, I really was not expecting this. It was like a big surprise for me. You know, I really, really appreciate this, you know. You're like, I, I think, what is this? Like the third or fourth person I know that has given me, like, <laughs> a present for my birthday, you know. All right, demons and demonesses, that's the Satanic Panic Show birthday blowout. You guys stay safe, stay metal, hail Satan, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Trying to light, run for your life. We coming with 12 on the boots on the mic. Shocking the system, we fucking it up.